Hello, Mishpacha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm here today with a book haul. Uh, this is my first book haul of the year, and I don't think it's going to be my last book haul of the year, although I don't do these on a monthly or bi-monthly basis like some people do. But um, anyway, so this is, a, this is a combination of books that um, I got. Some of them are for my Arab American literature project that I'm doing this year where I read one book every month by an Arab, Arab American writer. Um, some of these are also for reading women challenge prompts for the 2021 reading women challenge. Um, and there are a few other random ones in here. Buddy reads book club picks at least one that I just wanted to get for fun. <laughs> um, so let's go. I have 12 books here to show you. The first one is Evelyn Shacker's Remember Me to Lebanon, Stories of Lebanese Women in America. Um, this is a fairly slim short story collection. Um, I think this was published in 97. No, 2007, my bad. Um, this whole decade off there. So anyway, this was published in 2007. Um, and Evelyn Shacker was a pioneer in the study of Arab American literature. She was one of the first scholars to really pursue inquiry into Arab American literature as its own distinct field um, with its own characteristics and goals, just like, say, African American literature or Asian American literature. Um, so this is, I think, her only, um, her only collection of fiction that she published. Most of the things she published were nonfiction, um, and this, these stories are in large part, I think, based on interviews that she conducted with Lebanese immigrants, primarily women, um, to the United States. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, and I think I've said before that I've taught, I've read and taught one story out of this collection before and I quite like it, so I'm curious to read the rest of them. Um, so the first story in this collection is called The Story of Young Ali. And the sentence says, the first sentence says, when he's hurt my feelings or I'm in a mood, I try to spell things out for him the best I can. So um, there you have it. That's the first one. Um, the second book I'm hauling is Three Dreams in the Key of G by Booktube's own Mark Nash. Um, so I'm really curious to read this. I know Brian at Bookish has read this and said good things about it. I think maybe also Roz at Scally Dandling About the Books has read this and said nice things about it too. Um, so I'm definitely curious to read it. Um, so this says, in peace agreement Ulster, a mother rears her two daughters as her husband is decommissioned from his violent paramilitary past. In Florida, a septuagenarian runs a community refuge for women. However, the authorities have surrounded it as a threat to national security. In laboratories all over the world, the human genome is being dissected and decoded. In Three Dreams in the Key of G, three female voices unknowingly influence each, each other's fates as they battle to assert themselves and discover their voices in hostile environments. So um, I think this is Mark's latest book. Mark, you can correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong about that. Um, and yeah, again, I'm excited to read it. Um, so. Each of the three narrators, ha I, I sort of flipped through the book, has um, little symbols that set off where their sections begin. Um, so in the first section, we have, my name is Jean Ohm, phonetically speaking, and in actuality too, though I have no passport to prove this, denied me since now they bear the EC's papist impress. Um, so I'm definitely excited to read this at some point later this year. Um, and yeah, again, booktube's own Mark Nash, so good times. Um, the third book I'm hauling is The Mandel, Mandelbaum Gate by Mur Muriel Spark. Wow, this is a mouthful. The Mandelbaum Gate by Muriel Spark. Boom. Okay, guys. <laughs> this is the February pick for the Barter Hordes Backlist Book Club that is run by Robert over at Barter Hordes. Um, and this says, when Barbara Vaughn's fiancé joins an archaeological excursion to the site of the Dead Sea Scrolls, she takes the opportunity to explore the Holy Land. It is 1961, and the nation of Israel is in its infancy. For Barbara, a half-Jewish Catholic convert, this is a journey of faith, and she ignores warnings not to cross 
the Mandelbaum Gate from Israel into Jordan. An adventure of espionage and abduction from pilgrimage to flight, the Mandelbaum Gate is one of Spark's most compelling novels. Um, and I've read something else by Muriel Spark, although the title escapes me now. It was for some creative writing class I took in graduate school. Um, so, oh, of course, it was The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. That's what I read by her. There was a Miss Jean Brody in her prime. Um, so this book was published originally in 1965, um, kind of on the long side. It's over 300, it's close to 400 pages, actually. So first sentence, sentence of this says, is called, the first chapter is called Freddy's Walk. Sometimes, instead of a letter to thank his hostess, Freddie Hamilton would compose a set of formal verses, rondeaux, redoubles, villanelles, rondelles, or Sicilian octaves to express his thanks neatly. It was part of his modest nature to do this. Um, so again, this is a book that's about Jewish identity, it seems like, so obviously I'd be interested in reading that. Um, so I was glad that that was picked for the Barter Hordes Backlist Book Club. Um, the next book I have here that I'm hauling is Farewell Damascus by Gada Salon. Um, this was one that I got for the 2021 Reading Women Challenge prompts to fulfill a prompt about read an Arab author in translation, I think is the prompt. Um, and this was published by, I mean, not published, I'm sorry, translated by Nancy Roberts. Um, so this novel was published in 2017. Um, it is set in the early 1960s in Damascus, a city that now languishes in the grip of corruption and political oppression following the Ba'athist takeover in Syria. The book opens as Zane, a university student and aspiring young writer, plots an early morning escape from her house as her husband slumbers. Her mission to get an illicit abortion, plans for which she's divulged to no one, and to announce that she wants out of her stifling marriage. A rebel and a trailblazer par excellence, Zane draws down the wrath of polite society and the authorities, political and religious alike, as she challenges attitudes and practices that demean rather than dignify, and a ruling regime that sucks the life out of both oppressed and oppressor, etc., etc. So, I mean, that sounds really good to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I definitely will be excited to read this at some point in the future, um, sometime later this year. So, the first First lines of this say, I'll have to slip out of bed without his noticing, get dressed in a flash, and leave the house before he wakes up, and either interrogates me or follows me. He mustn't know where I'm going. Nobody can. Um, so yeah, Farewell Damascus by Gada Saman, translated by Nancy Roberts. Um, next book I have is also for a 2021 Reading Women Challenge prompt, and it is A Safe Girl to Love by Casey Plett. Um, Casey Plett is a Canadian trans author, and this is to fulfill the prompt to read something by a trans author. Um, so this is a short story collection. Um, it says that they are stories that stretch from a rural Canadian Mennonite town to a hipster gay bar in Brooklyn, featuring young trans women stumbling through law, sex, harassment, and love. These stories, shining with whiskey and prairie sunsets, rattling subways, and neglected cats, show growing up as a trans girl can be charming funny, frustrating, or sad, but never predictable. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely excited to read this at some point um, later this year. The first story in this collection is called Other Women, um, and the opening lines of it say, My mom picked me up fresh off the red eye and we went for donuts. It was the day before Christmas Eve. I told her all the fun parts about living in Portland, and she listened and hummed and marched her way through a Tim Hortons dozen. Um, so yeah, Casey Plutt, A Safe Girl to Love. Um, next book I have here is for my Arab American Literature Project this year. It is Through and Through Toledo Stories by Joseph Geha. I think this was originally published in 1990. It was originally published in 1990, um, but this is a second edition, so I think it's updated and it maybe has more stories than the original one did. Um, so it says it's a collection of broadly interrelated stories, eight originally published in 1999, with three new stories added in the second edition. One of the first books of modern Arab American fiction, these stories offer a warm, inspired portrait of an extended Arab family in a Lebanese and Syrian community in Toledo, Ohio, spanning the decades between the 1930s and the present, etc., etc. Um, so, first story in this collection is called Monkey Business, and the first lines of it are, Make way, make way, the marriage song begins. It's words, it's slow, circular rhythms catch in the back of Zizi's mind as he waits for the streetcar. 
the bridegroom walks with sureness, and absently he begins to twist his wife's wedding ring around the knuckle of his little finger. Make way. Um, yeah, I feel kind of drawn in by that already, so I'm definitely excited to read this at some point. Um, the next book I have is, again, also for my 2021 Arab American Literature Project, and it is The Cairo House by Samia Sarah Gelden. Um, and this, okay, it does not have a, a blurb on the back. Um, so this is a story, uh, I'm also actually using this to fulfill a Reading Women Challenge prompt, which is to something like read a book about a woman in politics, because I think this book has to do with um, a politically prominent family in Egypt as they go through several regime changes uh, over a couple of decades. Um, that is my understanding of what the story is about. So, um, yeah, so the first, the prologue is called The Chameleon, and the first lines of this are, for those who have more than one skin, there are places where the secret act of metamorphosis takes place, an imperceptible shading into a hint of a differing gait, a softening or a crispening of an accent. For those who past and present belong to different worlds, there are places and times that mark their passage from one to the other, a transitional limbo, like airports. Um, interesting. So yes, definitely looking forward to reading this at some point later this year. As I am with all of these. <laughs> so the next, uh, next few of these are all uh, ones that I'm going to be doing as buddy reads. Um, this is also for my Arab American literature project. It is Tocqueville by Khaled Matawa, um, a collection of poetry. I'll be doing this as a buddy read with Jen of Remembered Reads in... I think we said April. I think we said April, <laughs> but you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so again, this is a collection of poetry. Uh, it was also the winner of both the Arab American Book Award and the Poetry Center Book Award. Um, and if the first one's not too long, I'll read it to you. First poem is called Lyric. Yeah, okay, it's not that long. It's only this long. Lyric. Will antos be found like seeds planted among rows of song? Will mouths recognize the hunger in their voices, all mouths in unison? The ah in harmony, the way words of hope are more than truth when whispered. Will we turn to each other and ask, how long has it been, how long since? A world now, a world then, and each is seeking a foothold, trying to remember when we looked at one another and found a world again. Surely what we long for is at the wheel contending. Surely we'll soon hear its unearthly groan. I'm intrigued. So yes, looking forward to reading this with Jen in a couple of months. Um, next book I'm reading is also going to be a buddy read, also for my Arab American Literature Project. It is Transfer by Naomi Shihab Nye also a collection of poetry. I will be doing this as a buddy read with Beth Ann of Beth Ann Bruning of Sokolar. I will, by the way, everyone I mentioned, I'm going to link their channel down below, of course, as always. Um, and I think I've read some odd poems here and there by Naomi Shihab Nye, but I've never read a full collection of her work before, so um, we'll be excited to read this with Beth Ann in March. Again, if the first poem is not too long, I'll read it to you. Uh, it looks like the first poem is called History... Yeah, it's not that long, so I will, I will read it. History. In the 15th century, the sailor Ahmed bin Majed wrote about movements of stars, sang praises to the moon and the waves. Today, millions of people crammed into cities selling fruits from rickety carts. It's hard to see stars for lights and haze, scraps of messages weighing us down. At the airport in Abu Dhabi, everyone, old, young, looked like my father, our son. Quick blinks, gaze away, write this night on the inside of your sleeve. We were born to wonder, to grieve lost lineage, what we did to one another on a planet so wide open for doing. Yeah, definitely looking forward to reading this in March. Um, next book I'm reading is also a buddy read, but this one's not for my Arab American Literature Project. Uh, but this is Carlos Lozada's What Were We Thinking? A Brief Intellectual History of the Trump Era. Um, so basically my understanding of this is that Lozada read, I don't know, 150, 200 books, something like that, that were published during Trump's presidency that kind of attempted to explain it in a number of ways. 
Um, and so this is kind of an overview of his findings from reading all of these books and kind of some themes that they had in common and what he thinks were um, the key takeaways that were actually useful and the points that people made that maybe weren't as useful or weren't totally getting at the heart of the matter. Um, and so I'm going to be doing this as a buddy read with Jenny of What's Bookin'. Um, and I think we're doing this as a buddy read in March. Again, Jenny, if I'm wrong about that, let me know. <laughs> so looking forward to reading this. I have not read any other books about the Trump presidency, even though I have been tempted by them at various points, but I figured now that we're actually on the other side of it, thank God, um, that I can handle this, especially because it's an overview of a bunch of books that I don't actually want to buy or invest in, even as I'm curious about what's in them. So this seemed like the perfect book for that. Um, next book is also for my Arab American Literature Project, and it is Egyptian Compass, a collection of poetry by Pauline Caldas. Um, she is Egyptian, as would be implied by the title. Um, and it's actually blurb on the back by Khaled Matawa, whose collection in Tocqueville I already showed you. Um, this was published in 2006, and again, if the first poem is not too long, I'll read it to you. First poem is called ABC, and then it has a slash, and there's some Arabic letters, which I imagine are probably ABC in Arabic, but I don't know for sure. Oh yeah, this has Arabic in it, I can't read this. <laughs> Um, so you'll just, you'll just have to miss out on that one because, uh, my Arabic is non-existent. So, um, but I will be, I will be curious to read this. And then the last book I have is, um, a col another collection of poetry because, you know, you can never have too much poetry. When the light of the world was subdued, our songs came through a Norton anthology of native nations poetry edited by Joy Harjo. So, as implied by the title, this is a big old collection of native poetry. Um, and it's organized, I have, to, I have to wait and see how it's organized, because I did flip through this at one point. So it looks like it's organized geographically. Um, so the first section is Northeast and Midwest. So that has poems by, say, Ojibwe, Anishabeg peoples. Um, also looks like it has some poems by... Um, Earth Nation, uh, Mohawk, Shawnee, etc. And the next section is Plains and Mountains, so that has Dakota, Sioux, Kootenai, Crow, Comanche, Cherokee, La Lakota, um, and then you have Pacific, Northwest, Alaska, and Pacific Islands, and that has poems by um, Tlingit, Umatilla, if I'm saying that right, who knows, um, Nez, per Nez Perce, um, Kanaka, Maoli, um, Yakima, Spokane, uh, yeah, and then some more that I already just said. Um, and then Southwest and West, which has poetry by Yuma, Yaki, Laguna, Acoma, um, Dine, Apache, um, Gila River, and more. And then you have Southeast, so that has poetry by Choctaw, Cherokee, Chickasaw, um, Masovsky, um, yeah, and I think, I think that's it. Um, but yes, I'm very excited to read A, more poetry, and B, more native poetry. Um, so I, I will be slowly making my way through this collection at some point. It's clearly somewhat of a project book. Um, I'm definitely not going to be speed reading my way through an anthology of um, a bunch of poetry that clocks in it. Let's see. 400 and... 420 pages, yeah, so I'll be speed, speed reading my way through this, so might have to read this over like a couple of months or something like that, but yeah, looking forward to that at some point. Um, so those are all of the books that I've hauled for January. Um, if you have thoughts about any of these books, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. Hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading, and until next time, would it kill you to call you mama?